Hello, welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 31 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about using the ASP.NET Add Rotator Control. The Add Rotator Control in ASP.NET is used to display random ads. These ads can be stored in an XML file or in a database table. In this example, we'll see how to use an XML file. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have a simple ASP.NET web application project. Let's add an XML file to this project. Right click on the project, select add new item. Select XML file. Since this file is going to contain the advertisements information, give it a meaningful name. Let's call this ads data in this case and click add. That should add the XML file. Now we know that this XML file is going to serve as the data source for the add rotator control. So this XML file is going to store that advertisements information. Okay. Now I have this advertisement XML already typed in. Let's copy and paste that here. So if you look at this, since the add rotator control has to understand these ads, it has to confirm to a specific structure. Now the root element here is the advertisements element. And I have three advertisements here. And each ad has got, you know, if you look at an ad, it has got an image. And then when the user clicks on that image, they can navigate to the advertiser's website. So the image of the ad, where is that present? That is determined by the image URL property. So here we are saying for the first ad, the image URL is going to be present, you know, in tilde. Tilde is nothing but in the current web application's root directory. I'm going to have images folder within which I'm going to have google.png. So obviously within our web application project, we need to have the images folder. So right click and add a new folder and let's call that images and this folder is going to contain google.png image and similarly if you look at the second ad that's going to contain Prajim and the third ad YouTube so all the images are going to come from this path within the root web application directory check the images directory and then there the images should be present I already have this images so let me copy all of them and paste them into this images folder Okay, so we have the images. So now when we run the web application project, what's going to happen? You know, this, if this ad is displayed, that image gets displayed. And then when the user clicks on that ad, you know, it has to go to the advertiser's website. And that is controlled by the navigate URL, the URL of the advertiser right here. Okay, and then alternate text, obviously, if the image is missing for some reason, you have misspelled that or your image is missing, then in that case, it will use this text. Please visit google.com. And then the next important, you know, element here is the impressions. And if you look at that, for each ad, I have a different number. Now, what is this? This is a weighted number, meaning, you know, this element actually determines how often among these ads, a specific ad will be displayed. The higher the number, the higher is the likelihood that specific ad will be displayed. If you look at this, I have three ads here, and the highest number, as far as impressions is concerned, is a Prajim ad, the second ad. It has got 30, so it's most likely that this ad will be more frequently shown rather than the other two ads. Okay, so now let's go ahead. So all we have done until now is created an XML file which is storing our advertisements information and then the images. We added the images to our web application project. Now to display the ads themselves, we need to add the ad rotator control onto the web form. So let's drag and drop the ad rotator control. And if you look at this control, it's like any other standard ASP.NET control. It has got the ID and run it is equal to server. Now somehow we need to link this ad rotator control with this XML file that has the advertisements information. So how do we do that? There is a property called advertisements file. You can do that here within the HTML source or I can actually flip to the design mode, go to the properties of this and then set the advertisement file there. So click on the ellipsis button from your project, select ads data.xml, click OK. So that should have added the advertisement file there. That's it. We have hooked up everything now. Let's go ahead and run this project. 
So obviously the ad rotator control will look at the XML file, read one of the advertisements information and load that here. Now look at that. It's actually displaying this ad, Prajim ad. And now as I move my mouse over the ad, look at that at the bottom of the browser window it displays the navigate URL the URL that I'm going to go to when I click this ad and that is determined by navigate URL so when I click that I will visit the prajimtech.com website the advertisers website and if you look at this here it's actually we are actually navigating to the advertisers website within the same window leaving the original website now some people prefer to open the links to advertisers websites in a new window is it possible to do with the ad rotator control absolutely all you have to do is to set a target property so go to the HTML source and there is a target property set that to underscore blank that's all we have to do so now let's go ahead and run this once again now when we click any advertisement we actually will land up on the advertisers website in a new browser window so when I click this look at that I am still on the original site but then the YouTube has actually opened up in a new browser window okay so let's close that all right so we have seen how to you know open the advertisers website in a new browser window and another important element here within the XML file is the keyword okay now we could use this keyword actually this keyword element to filter the advertisement that we want to show using the ad rotator, ad rotator control now this ads.xml can contain hundreds and hundreds of ads okay and in my web application let's say I have 25 or 30 web pages and based on you know the content of the specific web page I want to filter the ads okay is it possible absolutely okay now let's say on web form one I want to display only Google Ads if you look at the advertisements that we have at this time we have three ads out of which two are related to Google YouTube and google.com are related to Google now on this web form one you know it's more it contains most and for more information about Google websites and Google products so probably displaying Google Ads on this page is more relevant contextual advertisement okay so I want to filter every other ad except you know Google Ads is that possible absolutely and how do we do that using the keyword filter so you specify the keyword filter here now I want to display only Google Ads on this web form 1.aspx so in that case I use this Google keyword and put that there so what's going to happen when when this page renders the ad rotator control filters every other ad it only picks up those ads which matches that keyword you know Google in this case only YouTube and Google will be shown let me run this now so no matter how many times we are going to refresh this company uh, this page it's going to either show YouTube or Google it will never show Prajim Tech ad okay now we are changing the keyword filter you know in the HTML we can also change that this actually in the code behind file programmatically on the page load or anywhere in in any event that you want and how do we do that all you have to do is add rotator one dot keyword filter and specify your keyword filter there and now this technique is is very useful because you know you in, in a real time you have the master page and usually the master page dictates the layout of your ASP.NET web application project and maybe you have a top banner there displaying advertisements and which actually generates revenue for you but you have hundreds and hundreds of uh, pages within that web application and depending on the you know con on each specific content page you know you want to change the advertisements that you want, that you show on that um, 
banner on the master page. So in the content page, you can actually change the keyword filter. We'll actually talk about this when we talk when we discuss about master pages in, in a later session. But keep in mind changing the keyword filter at runtime could be very useful, especially when the ad rotator control is on a master page. And if we want to change the keyword filter on each content page based on the keyword density so that we can do contextual advertisement. We'll talk about this when we talk about master pages in a very great detail, in fact with an example. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.